Hollywood has grown greatly from what it used to be. The influence of our Golden Age actors on this growth can't go unnoticed. As far as most know, these actors have a perfect world. We forget that just like our lives, Hollywood also has the good, the bad, and the evil. In today's video, we will be discussing some of our Golden Age's most evil actors who are testament to the fact that not all that is portrayed is what it seems. You are not a true fan until you can view your stars in both worlds. 1. Kirk Douglas – Heroism and Villainy Kirk Douglas was born on December 9, 1916 in Amsterdam, New York. He was a passionate actor that discovered his love for the art at a very tender age. Douglas had his first appearance in the movie The Strange Love of Martha Ivers. Douglas was entangled in a lot of scandals up until his time of death in 2020. These scandals created a shadow on his career. His status preceded him as one of Hollywood's most notorious and brutal Hollywood personnel. One of the most popular of his outrageous behaviors was the reports of him mistreating 15-year-old Natalie Woods. She was reported to have spent hours in Douglas's room upon an invitation and was abruptly dismissed and threatened not to speak of the happenings. Although information from this day has not been verified, matters surrounding it surfaced shortly after the passing of Douglas. Douglas was considered a degenerate and was totally vilified on the social media pages of Miss Woods. Douglas had a lot of flaws and he attributed this to his upbringing. He was also known to be controlling on set and tends to micromanage the crew and casts. He dismissed the director of Spartacus after one week of work and tried to micromanage the staff during Paths of Glory. Despite Douglas's mannerism and notorious behaviors, his movies still turned out great. 2. Mickey Rooney – Abrasive, Nasty, and Rude Mickey Rooney was born September 23, 1920, in Brooklyn, New York. His real-life demeanor was in contrast to his on-screen characters. He was known to be extremely egotistical, abrasive, nasty, and rude. He wasn't highly celebrated by those who were close to him and worked with him. His personal life was marred with multiple marriages, divorces, financial struggles, and substance abuse. In 1997, Mickey Rooney was arrested on suspicion of beating his wife Jan Chamberlain Rooney, but charges against him were dropped due to lack of evidence. His unprofessional conduct persisted during filming and after making it very difficult to collaborate with him. His behavior led to conflicts with co-workers, directors, and his fans. In 1944, during the filming of National Velvet, Rooney treated Elizabeth Taylor very terribly, and this drew a lot of attention and criticism to his evil demeanor. He was said to have taken advantage of the teenage star, and later on went ahead to dismiss her and deny ever knowing. He spoke of her as untalented and entitled. Upon the death of Rooney in 2014, many more of his harsh and unkind treatment towards his colleagues throughout his career was revealed. 3. Faye Dunaway Hostile, demanding, and difficult, Dorothy Faye Dunaway was born January 14, 1941. Faye is known for her captivating performances and troublesome personality, but her legacy resonates with stories of chaos and disrespect. She was said to have abruptly departed her Broadway play due to physical altercations and having a hostile work environment. These were called rumors, but was eventually confirmed true when a collaborator on a project revealed one of the incidents. She was said to have slapped an individual for real in a scene instead of staging it. She brought on a very uncomfortable atmosphere on the set. Paul Huntley, who partnered with Dunaway in 1996 as a Broadway wig designer, witnessed her hostile behavior. He said in a report that Dunaway had slapped his assistant's hand due to a dissatisfaction with hairpins. Although Dunaway is a devout Catholic, she was known to have had several relationships that went public, had two marriages and two divorces. According to the book Easy Riders and Raging Bulls during the filming of Chinatown, Dunaway was portrayed to have engaged in some unusual habits like urinating into a trash can and refusing to flush the toilets in her dressing room. In the book, it was also stated that she threw a can of liquid that was said to be filled with urine at her work colleague during a disagreement. Dunaway's behavior has shocked some of the notoriously difficult actors like James Woods and Bette Davis. 4. Orson Welles – Offensive Recordings Orson Welles was born on May 6, 1915 in Kenosha, Wisconsin and died in Los Angeles, California on the 10th of October, 1985. He was a Hollywood actor, director, writer, producer, and of course, magician. He is known for his innovative and unique work in film, radio, and theater. 
He is said to be one of the best and most influential filmmakers of all time, and is known for his groundbreaking movie, Citizen Kane. Wells was described as a very handsome man with a figure and vocals that stands out. Orson was so gruesome that rumors had it that he was barred from Hollywood, however this wasn't true. Orson was a man of many talents so he always found his way out of the most difficult situations. Orson had a lesser known dark side that came to light when long lost tapes of him with his friend and director Henry Jagham were unveiled. He conversed with Henry in ways no one had seen him, and he said things people were shocked he could say. He was very open in these conversations calling Laurence Olivier dim-witted, and Spencer Tracy inductive, and Charlie Chaplin a hottie. He also commented on Bette Davis, who he said he can't stand to watch, and James Stewart, who he called a subpar actor. 5. Errol Flynn, Drinking Reputation, Errol Leslie Thompson. Flynn was born on June 29, 1909, in Battery Point, Tasmania, Australia. He has made remarkable contributions to motion pictures and the television industry in the earlier years. Not long after Flynn's fame, he began to have a reputation of smoking, hard drinking, drug abuse, and extreme womanizing. He was linked to having had romantic encounters with several women, such as Lupe Velez, Dolores Del Rio, and many others, and he was married a total of three times. His drunkenness and substance abuse got him thrown out of certain places with utmost disdain. Flynn installed numerous mirrors and compartments throughout his mansion, including a hidden hole above the guest's room for perverted observation. Actress Hedy Lamarr mentioned in her biography that many of the bathrooms in his mansion had peepholes or ceilings with opaque glass squares, of which you can't see through but you can be seen through it. In 1942, Flynn was faced with assault allegations from young women who blew out and tarnished his reputation. Flynn had an unconventional upbringing and was expelled from school at the age of 17. Could his behavior be attributed to this? Peter Sellers, eccentric. Peter Sellers was born on September 8, 1925 in South Sea, Portsmouth, England. Sellers made one of the earliest debuts yet at two weeks old, and as he grew, he kept accompanying his parents for their acts. Sellers is generally known for his comedic brilliance, but behind that hid some very evil traits. He was a troubled genius, and director Blake Edwards found it very difficult to collaborate with him. Sellers was an extremely shy young man who tended to be controlled by his mother, yet he harbored no resentment or resistance. He was said to be eccentric, as he was an only child, and mostly he was alone. After the passing of his mother, he conversed with his deceased mother and carried her shrine wherever he went. He had very unpredictable mood swings and deeply rooted insecurities. Seller believed that his antics fueled his creativity. He believed that without such spontaneity, his craft and comedic brilliance would suffer. His unconventional method sometimes disrupts filming, leaving his partner at the time, Edward, furious. These tumultuous acts of sellers created serious strains in their communication, leaving them to communicate through their assistants. But despite this, they were able to produce box office hits, including five Pink Panther films and The Party, a 1968 classic. Seven, Milton Berle, Gambling and Arrogance, Milton Berle, born on July 12, 1908 in New York City, U.S. Milton stands as a pioneer for his era, charming millions of viewers. His weekly program went round and became a culture. It was so influential that when the show was on, businesses would pause operations to ensure their clients didn't miss episodes. Everyone tuned in weekly to watch the antics of Uncle Nitty. However, as time went on, the fame and eagerness surrounding the weekly show started to dim and he was enlisted to host Saturday Night Live. This was a move that went on to slap them all back in the face as the show was an epic fail. Burley's exaggerated antics and left the cast, crew and owner of the show flabbergasted. It was said that his constant mugging for the camera and micromanagement resulted in a terrible mockery of the show. After this, his legacy was tainted with tales of arrogance and self-importance. Burl made sure to stay away from drugs and alcohol but smoked his cigarette with so much passion, almost as much passion as he womanized. He was a gambler who took interest in horse racing. His gambling can be considered one of the major reasons he was unable to gather the same level. Of wealth as his peers, 
He was also known for his enormous penis size that was sometimes the center of some jokes. 8. Bing Crosby, Cruel Sadistic Father Harry Lillis, Bing Crosby Jr. was born on May 3, 1903 in Tacoma, Washington, U.S. As the first multimedia star, he became one of the most popular and influential musical artists of the 20th century worldwide. Crosby appeared in over 70 feature films and recorded more than 1,600 songs. He is renowned for his time classics like White Christmas. It was reported that Crosby had an alcohol problem and he was in jail for 60 days for drinking and crashing his car during Prohibition, but he got his drinking under control. Crosby was married twice and had numerous affairs. Besides this, his relationship with his children has painted a contrasting narrative to his charm and charisma outlook. In Gary Crosby's memoir, Going My Way, he described his father, Bing, as a cruel, sadistic father who beat his sons until they bled almost every day. Which father does that? Gary says, I only recall the essence of the pain and desolation in describing his father's legacy, while in his lifelong low self-esteem, the suicidal depression. Bing also had a fear of his children succumbing to the Hollywood lifestyle. His fixation on shielding them from this caused a constraint on their relationship. He struggled with emotional expression, and even in his last moments, his stoic demeanor still shined through the end of his final moments on a golf course in 1977. 9. Henry Fonda, Self-Absorbed and Unaffectionate Henry James Fonda was born on May 16, 1905, Grand Island, Nebraska, U.S. He was an American actor whose career on Broadway and in Hollywood spanned five decades. On both screen and stage, he frequently portrayed characters that embodied the image of an everyman. Fonda established himself early on as a Broadway actor before making his Hollywood film debut in 1935. Fonda epitomized to be one of the most beloved men of Hollywood. But beneath that facade laid a tormented and staggering private world. He was exposed as a flawed husband and father. He was self-absorbed and uncomfortable with displaying emotions. Fonda was married five times and his infidelity spanned four of those five marriages. He had three children, one of which was adopted. Fonda's connection with his children has been characterized as emotionally distant. He harbored an aversion to displays of emotion, both in himself and in others, which remained a consistent aspect of his persona. Whenever he sensed his emotional barriers being encroached upon, he would erupt in fits of anger, revealing a formidable temper that instilled fear in his family. Fonda passed away at his Los Angeles residence on August 12, 1982, due to heart disease. In accordance with his wishes, no funeral services were conducted, and his remains were cremated. 10. Wallace Beery, misanthropic and difficult to work with. Wallace Fitzgerald Beery was born April 1, 1885 in Clay County, Missouri, U.S. Wallace had a very impressive career, appearing in 250 films in a 36-year career. He was the highest paid actor in the world in the 1930s, and due to contributions in the film industry, he was inducted into the Hollywood Walk of Fame posthumously. There was a carefully crafted image around Wallace Beery as a warm-hearted man, but the truth behind the scenes was far from these. Beery's treatment of his crew members was notoriously harsh, and incidences of physical aggression towards juvenile actors were exposed. He was known to have had two marriages and had a couple of adoptions while at it. Swanson, his first wife, stated in Here Autobiography that Beery raped her on their wedding night and later deceived her into taking an abortifacient while she was pregnant, resulting in the loss of their child. Swanson filed for divorce in 1917. She showed obvious discomfort in their relationship. She was 15 as at the time of marriage and he was 30. He was also found to be involved in a drunken altercation in 1937, where he and three others were reported to have attacked Healy, and the beating gotten from this attack led to Healy's death a few days after. Asides from these, Beery was widely regarded by his colleagues as misanthropic and difficult to work with. Robert Young characterized him as a shitty person. Beery was loathed by everybody, yet remained blissfully unaware of it. If you like this video, do not forget to share and subscribe. Also, let us know in the comments who gets your votes as the most evil actor of Hollywood's golden age.